if uh, there's any audio issues, if you have problems uh, hearing or the audio gets weird uh, with GoToWebinar, what I've learned, the best thing to do is to uh, jump off and then back on. We are not quite at capacity, so you shouldn't have a problem getting back on. Uh, if my audio starts to get weird, somebody please uh, throw something or wave your hands or just uh, make a comment in the comment box. Okie doke. Here's what we're going to go over today. Um, and I expect this to last about an hour, hour and a half, depending on questions. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to open up for questions at the end. Uh, and depending on how many people are still around and how many questions there are, uh, we'll see how long we can go with that. Um, we are going to run through a pretty brief introduction and overview. Uh, then we're going to look at why people fail in this business. Uh, specific uh, reasons and thought processes that keep some of us from doing better in this business than we really ought to. Uh, from there, I'm going to go over my take on how to succeed in this business. Uh, we're going to look at a few specific case studies, uh, which hopefully will give you some ideas and things to think about. Uh, we're going to look at some worst practices and best practices, and then open up for Q&A. OK, real quick, intro and overview. First things first, who am I and why should you listen to me? My name is Michael Allman. I've been doing this a long, long time. Uh, I am a full-time internet marketer. This is what I do for a living. It's all I do, and it's what I've been doing for well over 10 years. Um, I've written a bunch of eBooks, uh, courses, um, done a lot in the internet marketing space, been involved in <clears throat> virtually every uh, business model from AdSense to affiliate marketing to website flipping, uh, et cetera, and still maintain some of those in my business as uh, revenue generating parts of the business. Um, I've done a lot of teaching. I've been around the t-shirt business uh, essentially since it began, and I've done everything we're going to talk about. None of this is theory or stuff that sounds like it should work or things that I heard from somebody else. Um, everything you'll hear from me is from direct, personal, first-hand experience. Uh, now, the idea for this particular webinar is to give you perhaps a somewhat different perspective on what it takes to succeed in this business, look at some of the reasons that might be interfering with your success, things that may keep you from doing better than uh, you should be, and go over some of the things you can do right away, hopefully, to become more successful in this business. Let's talk about the t-shirt business for a moment. And I do want to mention up front, uh, this particular webinar was designed for and is targeted to people who are already in this business. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is not an introduction to the t-shirt business. If this is completely new to you, um, I will be doing webinars that introduce the business from the beginning, but I'm going from the assumption that you have put your toe or your foot or both feet into this business and are looking for ways to get more information and improve your outcomes rather than first looking at what this business is. So with that said, Let's talk a little about the tea business. It's what I call a perfect storm of opportunity. The market and the industry are enormous. Um, my best 
information, and I looked back on this yesterday, is that it is a $40 billion industry, and that represents a lot of shirts. In other words, there's a huge volume of sales and selling going on in this business. It's an evergreen business. People are always going to buy shirts. Uh, you don't buy one shirt and then you're done. Uh, seasons change, looks and styles change, sizes change, the things that are meaningful to you change, interests come and go. The point is, this is a business that is evergreen. People are always going to be buying shirts. So being in this business is a good place uh, to be. It's also an infinite, no-cost inventory business. Unlike uh, e-commerce or physical products, there's no inventory involved. Uh, POD platforms, that's the print-on-demand platforms like Teespring and Represent and Viral Style and T-Chip and Sunfrog and uh, all the others, provide this incredible opportunity for us to be in a business selling physical products without any cost of inventory, no need to stock, to ship, to support, to bill, uh, fulfillment, none of that. In other words, we can have a physical products e-commerce business without any of the negative aspects or uh, problems that typically come with an e-commerce business. We also have virtually unlimited reach in selling to a customer base. We have effectively an unlimited customer base. Um, I'm assuming that most of you are using Facebook to sell with. There are other avenues. Um, it's not uh, a requirement, but it's certainly the most common way to do this, uh, and for many good reasons. Um, Facebook provides a unique opportunity that we've never had before, and that is the ability to touch, to get a product or an offer in front of almost the entire online world well over a billion people. Uh, and Facebook is growing, by the way. For those that follow Facebook, they have an initiative uh, that they're putting a lot of money, resources, and very smart people into getting all the rest of the world, uh, those who aren't yet both online and on Facebook, uh, to be so. So we have this evergreen business of selling physical products that don't cost us a thing to create, to um, inventory, to ship, to support, to bill, and the ability to get that product in front of virtually anyone. Finally, the business itself, <coughs> excuse me, is one of the most accessible or easy to enter business models I've ever seen. Again, I've been doing this a long time. I've been involved in virtually every uh, internet marketing or online marketing business model. You know, one of the reasons a lot of people go into internet marketing is that notion that anybody from anywhere at any point in life with just uh, a little uh, studying and research and a few sign-ups can go into business and have a legitimate opportunity to build significant revenue from nothing. That's the promise of internet marketing and why it's so attractive to so many people. Well, we all know, most of us know, there are a lot of caveats to that. Things aren't quite as um, uh, wonderful and easy as we once thought. But I will say this, the t-shirt business is the closest I know of to that perfect internet marketing promise. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Not only is it easy, accessible, doable, here now, available, 
it's incredibly lucrative and I believe sincerely anybody can learn to make it a success. There are some business models that have a similar promise that in my experience having worked with thousands of internet marketers over a lot of years I would say really don't meet that promise. Uh, not everyone is going to become successful. This business, I would say with complete sincerity, absolutely anybody can learn to make it a success. This screenshot, by the way, is my second month uh, of getting involved in t-shirts and the print-on-demand platforms. Uh, this was with Teespring. It was the first check I got from them. It was for $26,000 for a 30-day run of campaigns. But reality sets in. Unfortunately, most people who, who do this are not going to succeed. Most people will fail. And that's a common uh, characteristic across internet marketing. Most people who try fail. The question is, if this is such a lucrative and easy business as we all think it is, and I'm saying it is, why do so many people fail? Why isn't everybody successful? That's a lot of what we're going to go over today. Hopefully, you'll be able to identify with some of these issues, choke points, failure points, things that are keeping you from being more successful. Uh, understand what they are and how to remedy them or do them differently so that you can see that awesome success opportunity. Okay, so what does it actually take to succeed in this business? You know, it's, it's one thing to look at it and uh, kind of get, okay, these are t-shirts, you know, we're selling them to people, people buy t-shirts, what I need is a t-shirt and a way to get in front of people and everything's going to be wonderful. One of the things that I've learned that create problems, one of the reasons for people not achieving the success that they can is in the perspective, the way they look at this business. And we're going to go into that in a little more detail and you'll understand what I'm saying. So what actually uh, is necessary to succeed? First things first, a good design. And I use the term, the phrase design, uh, the way it's come to be used in this business to mean a t-shirt. When I say design, I don't just mean the graphical design. We use the phrase design to mean t-shirt. This is my design, this is my t-shirt. So we need a design, a shirt, that a group of people will like enough to actually want to buy. Nothing else matters if we don't have that, right? And we kind of know that intuitively. If our shirt isn't good enough, nobody's going to buy it. So it's got to be good enough for people to buy. But there's a little more to it than that. We need to be able to get in front of that particular group of people who like that design enough to want to buy it. That's what targeting is all about. And finally, we have to do it cost effectively. We have to be able to come up with a design, a shirt that a group of people will like enough to want to buy, be able to get in front of that group of people and pull it off for a low enough cost so that we actually make money. If we're going the Facebook advertising route, that means at a minimum, we have to understand the mechanics of Facebook advertising at least well enough so that we can get our shirts in front of the right people for less money than we make on the sales of the shirts. It sounds self-evident, obvious, right? But as they say, the devil is in the details. And in a lot of respects, the way we think about this is what will determine what we do and whether we succeed. So. Let's look at some of the reasons why this easy, obvious formula may not be working. Remember, we talked about those 
uh, three requirements, a good design, effective targeting, and low enough cost uh, reach or advertising. Number one was design. And design fail is easily the number one reason people don't make money in this business. Uh, to put it another way, it's trying to sell shirts that suck. And by shirts that suck, I, I don't just mean nobody wants to buy it or they're really ugly, although that can have something to do with it. Let's look specifically. A shirt or design that doesn't talk to a specific enough interest or group. We've all seen those uh, shirts, for instance, that are funny, but they're very general. Right? Who do we sell that to? Sure, a lot of people may want to buy a shirt that's very funny if it strikes them that way, but we would have to get that shirt in front of so many people to hit the ones that like it enough to want to buy it just because it's funny. That's what happens when we have a very general design. It doesn't talk to a specific enough interest or group, and so it becomes prohibitively expensive to try to get enough sales. We'd have to advertise across two general and large groups. Number two, it doesn't convey <clears throat> something that matters, and this is a key point. I use the phrase identity issues and interests, three I's. You have to hit one or more of these to have something that a group of people will want to buy. It has to either talk to their identity, issues that are important to them, or interests that are significant or dear to them. Identity, issues, interest. If it doesn't talk to one or more of those things, chances are really, really good. You may have a nice shirt. People may appreciate it, but they're not going to buy it. Even with that, it's got to evoke a strong enough reaction, generate enough emotion that somebody likes it enough to want to buy it. Those emotions typically are humor, laughter, pride, belonging, a sense of uh, this is me, this is what I'm about, or I'm this and it's a really funny way to look at it or consider it. You've seen plenty of these shirts that uh, make you laugh or otherwise make you feel something. Our design not only has to touch either identity issues or interests, but has to do it strongly enough to matter. <clears throat> Most of us who've been doing this more than a day have had plenty of campaigns where there seems to be a lot of interest. We run ads and people uh, like the ad, they comment on it, they share it all over the place, but nobody buys it. Why is that? That's incredibly common. Either it's not strong enough or it's not touching those three uh, eyes, identity, issues, or interest. Just because somebody thinks a shirt is funny or cute or applies, they may want to share it. Hey, take a look at this. Isn't this funny? Isn't this cute? Doesn't this strike you? But not strongly enough to want to wear it and want to buy it. And by the way, just as an aside, um, what I'm finding is that the younger age groups tend to do a lot of sharing and commenting and less buying. Uh, and my best uh, guess is that younger people are growing up trained on Facebook. They're constantly sharing and liking and commenting. That doesn't mean they're going to buy. Right? So when you're targeting uh, younger audiences, keep that in mind. A lot of younger people are used to sharing, commenting, liking. Uh, that doesn't always translate into buying. Okay. Three, finally, shirts that are actually just ugly, amateurish, poor design, poor use of fonts, 
colors, uh, the graphic or graphics themselves, the layout of the shirt. In other words, shirts that just don't look good. So if we recall, we need a shirt that is good enough that people are going to want to buy it. They're going to like it enough to want to buy it. That's the design. The four main reason that shirts don't sell have to do with design. It doesn't talk to a specific enough group. It doesn't convey something to them that matters. It doesn't convey it strongly enough, or it just plain doesn't look good. The next thing of the three components of this business is targeting. Right? We may have a shirt that meets all those criteria but still doesn't work and fails on targeting. Most commonly, it's because we are targeting too broadly. We're trying to uh, target too large a group, and the people within that group who will actually buy the shirt is such a small percentage that we either never reach them, or it costs us far more uh, to try to reach than we're earning. Um, an example I hear used uh, commonly is motorcycles. You know, maybe we have a, a, a biker shirt, right? So we go into Facebook interests and we type in motorcycle and up comes the motorcycle interest, which has a couple of million uh, people. How do people end up in an interest group? Very simply, they like, share, comment, or visit something related to that keyword or that niche. So everybody that has liked or shared or visited something to do with motorcycles ends up in the interest group under motorcycles. That doesn't mean they're that passionate about it. It doesn't even necessarily mean they're really interested in it. It means they saw something related to motorcycles and engaged with it. That's not enough. And when we try to sell to that kind of broad, marginally interested group, we can't get the traction we need to be profitable. Sometimes it's because of targeting mistakes. We think we understand the group we're going after, but we don't. We don't understand the terminology well enough to find the interests within that broad group that are passionate. We pick the wrong interests. In other words, targeting fail number two is not understanding who we're trying to target well enough. And number three is just plain bad target choices. We're going after a group that isn't all that passionate. They're not interested enough or they've been hammered to death. And I think the prime example of that is nursing. Anybody who gets into this business has seen those cute enough to stop your heart, skilled enough to start it shirts. Because if you look at any of the sites that show uh, that aggregate and show uh, campaigns like Teespring or TView or TSpy or any of those and sort by the most popular, what always comes up are those cute enough to stop your heart, skilled enough to start it. Because they've sold thousands upon thousands. <clears throat> well, because of that, we learned early on that nurses buy shirts. <clears throat> it's a uh, very... Um, uh, buy happy or purchase happy group. It's ideal in that respect, except as internet marketers, as we do with a lot of things, we've kind of poisoned the well. We've hammered them to the point where they've seen so many shirt ads, it's not that lucrative anymore. That would be an example of bad targeting, a group that is either not interested or just isn't going to buy. That doesn't mean you can't sell into that group, but it's an illustration of targeting fail, trying to target a group that for one reason or another just isn't going to buy. And finally, cost fail. Not understanding Facebook advertising well enough to do it cost effectively. 
which ad types to use, when we use them, why we use them, how to lower our ad costs and increase conversions, not understanding or taking advantage of things like retargeting, custom audiences, lookalike audiences, the stuff that for a lot of people new to this business are a little more complicated, um, a little overwhelming. You know, when we first start this business, those are hard things to really digest and understand. We don't need to know all of that, but we do need to know enough to advertise cost effectively. You know, in the sign up for this webinar, I had uh, I had put a box for one question: uh, What is uh, what obstacle? Uh, or what is your biggest obstacle, do you think, to success in this business? And I actually read through all of them. And a lot of them had to do variations of a theme on Facebook advertising, not knowing which ad types to use, not understanding uh, the mechanics of doing it properly. For better or worse, <clears throat> to succeed in this business, you really need to understand that. It's not that hard, it's a lot of information. What I found is that if I stick to some uh, basic boundaries, if I go only with uh, website click ads, which you can do, and understand how they work, how to lower my cost, uh, how to run them effectively, I can begin to succeed in the cost area rather than trying to understand all of it at once and just becoming overwhelmed and uh, you know saying I, I just I don't know I'm just gonna uh, do what looks right and hope for the best hoping for the best is a sure way to failure in any business okay so those are the three main areas why things don't work out for us our design our targeting or our cost to run ads. I want to talk about just a couple of more bad practices and then we're going to get into what we can do to turn that around and to succeed. Whoops, forgot that one. Staying with a campaign that is losing money. Uh, almost everybody's done that. Uh, you know, that's part design fail, part cost fail. Um, it's really hard when we have a design, a shirt, that we feel is really good and it's not selling for whatever reason. Maybe nothing to do with whether it's good or not. Maybe our targeting's off, etc. It's really hard, especially when we're new in this business, to accept what the market says or what our view of the market, how we're marketing it says, which is they're not buying it. And so we continue to run it hoping, well, Maybe tomorrow it'll turn around, or I did get that one sale early on, maybe it just hasn't caught, or if I try this, or staying with a campaign that is losing money simply loses more money. Now, there's merit in understanding why it's losing money. Very often, it isn't because it's a loser, it's because we're, uh, we're doing one of those practices we talked about. We're not going after the right audience. We're going after them too broadly. We're uh, using an ad structure that simply costs too much. Uh, you know, there's, a, there's dozens of reasons. It doesn't necessarily mean it can't be a winner, but it does mean that it's losing money. And if nothing changes, nothing changes it's probably going to keep losing money. Staying with a campaign that's losing money is probably the best way to just keep losing money. We talked about targeting. This is on here twice. I apologize. It's up very late last night. Okay, bad practices. Going with a shirt that, uh, and this is just to, to kind of summarize that, and then we're going to go into uh, some how to succeed things, look at some case studies and particular examples. Going with a shirt that doesn't have a clearly definable audience, right? Um, there was an example. I didn't want to pull it up because I, I believe uh, the guy signed up 
for uh, the webinar and I didn't want to out his shirt. Um, it was something to do with, uh, it was a play on words about liking the sea, as in the ocean, right? Summertime, I miss the ocean, I like the ocean, and used the phrase vitamin C, C spelled uh, S-E-A as opposed to the letter C. Uh, the pri you know, it's cute, it's, it's, you know, it's everybody likes summer and likes the water and likes the ocean. And the problem is, uh, it just doesn't have, there's no clear way to get that in front of the people who will buy it. Um, it's a virtual guarantee uh, of, of failure, simply losing money. Okay. Launching a zillion unresearched ideas. One of the things I'll talk about shortly is research. Right? I've heard, I, I've, by the way, I've bought or been given almost every course that's on the market here. I, I'm going to be putting together a live training series, and I want to understand what's being taught, why people aren't succeeding, etc. So I've looked at a ton of these, I've listened to a ton of webinars, and one of the things I hear way too often is that notion that to succeed, you have to launch a zillion campaigns, 30 campaigns every day. Right? And I think it might have been Teespring, one of the uh, POD platforms, uh, um, publicized <clears throat> a, a data point, it was very accurate, which correlated success with the number of campaigns that are launched. In other words, uh, in their database, the people that are making the most money are also the people that are launching the most campaigns. Unfortunately, the, uh, the wrong conclusion is that if I just launch enough campaigns, I'll succeed, or I'm not succeeding because I'm not launching enough campaigns. Now, I got to tell you, you know, maybe in the very first days of this business, when nobody on Facebook had ever seen a t-shirt ad before, or every uh, phrase and target market and idea was wide open, that might have been the case. You didn't need to do a lot of research. You didn't need to understand uh, your market or your niche. Today, right now, Launching a zillion unresearched ideas is yet another certain way to lose all your money. Um, one of the things that uh, I teach is the need to research and understand what you're doing and who you're trying to do it for. It's the only way to certain sustainable success. So we're going to look at that a little more deeply in a little bit, but that's one of those, it will kill you bad practices, launching a zillion unresearched ideas. Launching Me Too campaigns. You know, all of us, when we first get into this business, we see some of those shirts that are just making a huge amount of money. Um, if we use the thumbnail calculation that we're making $10 per shirt, you know, the cost is roughly, uh, our cost is roughly from $8 to $12. We're selling it from $19.95 to $24.95, roughly $10 profit each. And we see some of these campaigns that are selling thousands of shirts. What goes through our head is that's thousands of dollars or tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, a campaign that sells a few hundred is a few thousand dollars. That math doesn't work out because our cost is typically twice that. But the idea is we see these campaigns that are just selling zillions of shirts. So the obvious inclination is, well, let me do that. A, it's easier than coming up with something on our own. B, we already know it sells. And C, I want some of that money. You know, that's things making a lot of money. Oh, I want some of that. Let me do that. Jump in there, and maybe I won't sell as many, but I can make some money. Well, guess what? You know, we've all tried that, and we all know how that works. It rarely works out well. It's a bad practice. Uh, there's a whole lot of reasons why copycat or Me Too campaigns are a bad practice, but almost all of us have tried it and have seen the results 
believe your own eyes, it doesn't work. Okay. Uh, another one of these, uh, I've heard, especially early on, so many people preaching, uh, launch a zillion campaigns, $5 each. <laughs> $5 is simply not enough to get enough information to know whether a campaign is going to be successful. And almost always, it's going to give you bad information. It's going to give you wrong answers. Either one will sell right away, and your budget runs out and think, oh, well, it's, it's a good one. I sold a shirt. I sold two shirts. Or $5 runs out, no shirts are sold, and the uh, implication is this is not a winner. Leave it and move on. The fact is, that's not enough information. You know, sometimes if we have a really good design in a really viable niche and our targeting is spot on, that $5 may result in a, a good number of sales, and that tells us accurately, wow, this is a winner. It's the flip side you can't rely on not seeing positive results from $5 does not tell you whether that shirt is a loser or not. Now, one of the reasons people preach that is the whole, oh, you can get into this business for $5 advertising budget, you can do it cheap, it only takes $5, you need to launch a million campaigns, so who has millions of dollars if you do it at $5? Uh, each, you could, you could do the 20 a day, and it doesn't cost that Bad information, bad practice. Remember I mentioned bad practice, launching a zillion unresearched ideas? For you to properly launch a shirt as quickly as you can do it, if you do it without research, you're just throwing stuff against the wall and will fail more often than not. So you've got to do some research. So it's impossible to launch 30 or 20 campaigns uh, every day. So it's not as if you have to spend that much money on a zillion campaigns. Instead, spend more money on fewer properly researched campaigns. We're going to talk about what that means and how to do that uh, in just a little bit. But bad practice, launching a zillion unresearched ideas, particularly if they're Me Too campaigns, and trying to uh, guesstimate from a $5 ad spend whether that's going to be successful or not. And again, staying with a campaign that isn't selling. Certain way to just keep losing money. Okay, let's move on to how to succeed. All right. It looks like we've still, oh, we have, actually have more people than we started with. Um, welcome to those I didn't get a chance to welcome directly. We're now at... 13 countries represented here. Uh, and again, we are recording this. Any, everyone who registered will get a link for uh, the recording. So you'll be able to watch this again and hear my lovely voice and pearls of wisdom as many times as you like. Okay, enough of that. Good stuff. We're failing. We know we're failing. We've heard lots of reasons why we're failing. We're here because we want to succeed. So how do we do that? Let's talk about that. Fortunately, this really is one of the easiest businesses to succeed in. It just is. Uh, and, and I tell you that from a vantage point of having been in this industry since it was an industry, having done it all, uh, gotten my hands dirty, taught and uh, worked with thousands of internet marketers. And I will tell you without hesitation and utmost sincerity, it really is one of the easiest business businesses to do well in. If we do it right, what is right? Keys to the kingdom. Ideas, research, data, and optimization in that order. And again, what I tried to get across up front in the beginning of this webinar, uh, this is a lot about changing our perspective, not a uh, silver bullet, oh, if I do this, Everything else stays the same. I'm going to make it. Here's what I'm missing. I, I'm missing this targeting trick or this idea resource that nobody knows except the guys making a killing. It's not about that. It's about understanding what it takes to succeed 
and then doing that instead of spinning our wheels blindly based on bad or misleading information. And the keys to that are ideas, research, data, and optimization in that order. We're going to look at that. Remember that where we started all revolves around a shirt or a design that a group of people will like enough to want to buy. Here's where the critical shift in thinking has to happen, or at least the first one. Remember those three critical components. A shirt that a group of people want to buy, a way to target that group of people, and doing it for less money than we earn. But to start, reverse number one. Instead of beginning with a shirt that a group of people will want to buy, flip it around and start with a group of people who will want to buy a shirt. Let that sink in for a minute. Almost all of us start with the idea and then try to find the target group or define the target group to get it in front of. That's going ass backwards. We're hoping it's going to be good enough. We're hoping we can target that group. We're hoping we got it right. We guessed right now. In some cases, this is an easy step, a group of people who will want to buy a shirt because it's self-evident. If we think about those nursing shirt ideas, right, cute enough to stop your heart, skilled enough to start it, the group is self-evident, nurses, right? particularly um, uh, practicing nurses, hospital nurses, uh, etc. So not a lot of work has to be done. But if we start with the idea first and then try to figure out the group that will want to buy it, we're going to spin our wheels. We're going to have a lot of campaigns that don't work. We're going to have continual problems with weak targeting. We'll never know if that group is actually a group that's going to buy no matter how good our stuff is. So you want to succeed. You want long-term sustainable success where you're making money week in, week out. Start by thinking about your niche, the group of people that will want to buy, and then look for ideas to get in front of that group. You know, it's like that motorcycle example, a biker shirt. I see a, you know, a funny biker slogan. Now I got to figure out who within those 60 million uh, uh, members of the group motorcycles is going to like that, is going to want it. Is anybody going to want it? Much better, think about motorcycles. Spend some time, remember I said research, spend some time understanding that niche. It's very easy to do. There's some simple steps. We can use Facebook audience insights. We could just poke around on Facebook. Get a sense of, are these people that are buying things? Are these people that are passionate? Am I dialed in narrowly enough? Now I can consider an idea to get in front of them. Instead of, here's a great idea. Now I got to see if it works and if I can find the group of people to get it. For some of us, it sounds uh, obvious, self-evident. For some of us, it's a hard concept to wrap your head around. It doesn't sound any different, but it's a critical difference between long-term, sustainable success and losing money with the occasional uh, uh, carrot of something that sold kind of okay for a little while. Don't start with a shirt that a group of people want to buy. Consider first who is a group that you can reach that might buy something and then look for the idea. Begin with a definable target group. Then research and understand that group and that niche. Look at their interests. And these are mechanics that we can all learn. Audience Insights is a free tool that gives great information. It's less complicated than a lot of us think. It's easy to get good information out of it. 
look at the demographics. What are the what ages is this group comprised of? Gender, etc. So we don't dilute our ads. You know, a lot of us will have this idea. We'll go. We'll use interests only. Facebook allows three types of targeting: interests, demographics, and behaviors. Right. A lot of us just go with interests, you know, type in motorcycle. There's this huge group of motorcycles, 64 million or whatever it is. Even if everything else is right on, if we don't understand the ages, for instance, we might be paying to get our ad in front of the top and bottom of an age group that aren't going to buy, making our overall cost so prohibitive we lose money or find out we're advertising uh, to both desktop and mobile when, and everyone tells us mobile, 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 when in reality it's those same people but only the ones on the desktop that are in a position to click through to the sales page and, and buy the shirt. The point is research and understand your group. And I just want to reiterate this one time. Process fail is design before targeting, idea before niche. Have a target in mind, research that target, figure out if it's worthwhile, then shoot. You know, it's that uh, ready, aim, fire instead of ready, fire, aim. Okay, so how and where do we come up with these groups, these niches, and ultimately these ideas? And that's the fun part. Here we'll look at some, uh, some of the cooler stuff that you all got on here to see. Train yourself to the idea mindset. And I promise we're going to get to some actual examples momentarily. How do we do this successfully and sustainably long term? Train yourself. You know, I teach a lot of people. One of the things I do for almost every business model, we have to come up with a niche, whether it's affiliate marketing or building websites or uh, blogs, whatever it is, come up with a niche. How do we come up with a niche? Most people think about it. All right, I got to come up with a niche. Okay, bang, I got one. When I train people, I give them an exercise. Come up with 50 5 potential candidates. Are they going to come up with 50? Probably not. Do I care? No. The idea is don't just try to come up with one and stop. Give yourself the problem of coming up with some. The reason is the way your brain works. If we just try it as an exercise with a single answer and then move on, we're not going to come up with anything worthwhile or we're going to come up with the same things everyone else comes up with. Those in internet marketing have seen that phenomenon with newer people who pick the same six niches to get in into uh, like clockwork. Acne, weight loss, forex, and a couple others. If instead we think about having to come up with a bunch, what our brain does when we give it a problem, it continues working on it even when we're not thinking about it. That's what intuition is, thinking without thinking about thinking. So instead of just coming up with an idea and then moving on, if we train ourselves to the mindset of thinking about this and let our brains do the work, even when we're not thinking about it, all of a sudden later on we'll come up with another niche or idea that's even better. And then later that night or the next day, oh wow, you know what? I didn't even think about this one. This would be a great idea. And pretty soon you're seeing them everywhere and you're coming up with better and better interests, ideas, issues, etc. Get into that mindset that this isn't a singular problem with a single answer and you will have a lifetime's worth of great information, ideas, and data, whatever business model you go in. Continually look for ideas, sayings, memes, events, Train yourself to think in terms of what would be an area of interest? What are things people identify with? What are issues that they feel strongly about? And you will begin, your brain will start working on that problem even when you're not focused on it 
and you'll be yeah you ever see the people like wow that, I wish I thought of that or man this guy just comes up with all these great ideas I don't even know where to begin a lot of that is intuition which is thinking without thinking about thinking you can train yourself to do that give yourself that task of coming up with these ideas and let your brain do what it's evolved you know a half a million years to do it will think and think and continue solving that problem and pretty soon it's doing it all the time then ask yourself is this an idea or a group uh, or a saying or that would hit somebody their interest their issues, their identity, would it really rock them? And pretty soon you're going to have more of these than you know what to do with. Um, did I put a slide in for that? Uh, some examples. One more. Whoops. All right. Let me go backwards. Sorry. I missed that. Um, oh, I did do that. Yeah. Some examples of places you can look. T-shirt, other T-shirts that people are wearing in stores, bumper stickers, things people share on Facebook, popular sayings. As you train your brain, it'll start doing it. These things will come unbidden. Keep a notebook or use your phone. Take pictures whenever you see a saying, a shirt, a sign, a bumper sticker. Right? I use Evernote, and I have a which is a, kind of an online note keeping thing. I have a notebook filled with niche ideas, sayings, um, uh, images, jokes, etc. In a million years, I couldn't possibly get to all of them. But the result is I have a never-ending supply to start with, to then research or consider. And so I'm able to uh, float winner after winner after winner. Not 100%. I don't think anybody does. But understanding how to do it properly, I can do it with consistency over time and make a lot of money doing it. And that's really the key to this business. Okay. Did that? Whoops, am I going forwards or backwards? Okay. Case studies. For those of you that haven't bailed out yet, a couple of uh, cool case studies that hopefully will uh, whoops, will help illustrate some ideas, help you to think better, start succeeding. Remember we said niche target first, then idea. This is one of my favorite case studies. And this, by the way, is an example of one of those. Even, uh, it even happens to me. Man, I wish I had come up with this one. One great source of ideas are best-selling books, movies, show, TV shows, uh, etc. It means there's a large audience that is targetable, that's passionate about something. And Facebook hands that to us on a platter. Everything that becomes a bestseller, whether it's a movie, a book, a TV show, are easily targetable on Facebook. It's like free money. And it hits two to three of those three eyes. Interest, things people identify with, or about things that are meaningful to them. It's also, this one, both of these are great examples of thinking outside the box. Okay, the niche is a book. The name of it is To Kill a Mockingbird. It was written in the 60s. It won a Pulitzer Prize. It's a best-selling book. If you're from the States, uh, you may have had to read it in high school or middle school. It's a great story. It's old, right? But it's a classic. It's won tons of awards. It's, it was turned into a movie in the 60s that won, uh, Academy, I think, three Academy Awards. Right, so the niche is To Kill a Mockingbird. It's a story written uh, by a woman named Harper Lee. It revolves around, the story revolves around very passionate themes of morality, right and wrong, good and evil, equality, and racism. It's a classic story using 
the 1930s Deep South as its setting, and it's just a really good book, really good morals, uh, written really well, and as a result, it's a bestseller that people of a certain age, many of them have read, those who've read it, many of them loved it, they're passionate about the story, about the themes, and about the characters. And it's easy to find, it's just a, a you know, you could search Pulitzer Prize winning books and come up with, you know, a hundred just like this that would work just the same. The protagonist of, of that book, the hero, is a likable country lawyer who bucks the system, sticks his neck out for what he believes, kind of saves the day even though it does not have a happy ending. Um, but it's about a guy who sticks to his gun, sticks to his principles, uh, and is very, he's very admirable, likable, um, uh, righteous, uh, and funny guy. People relate to him. Remember those three eyes? Ide identity. They identify with him because he's got the characteristics that people want in themselves or have in themselves or want people to think they have in themselves. It touches identity, interest, and issues. His name, by the way, is Atticus Finch. He's the lawyer, he's the main guy, he's the hero and the protagonist of To Kill a Mockingbird. Remember that this was written in the 60s, it takes place in the 30s. Somebody came up with the idea of doing a shirt, remember he's a lawyer, right? Law Offices of Atticus Finch, Attorney at Law, Maycomb, Alabama, which is the town that this story takes place in. Now, there's nothing in the book that has this. The book doesn't have any illustrations. Even the movie, you never see his office, right? He has no business cards. There are no graphics, right? But somebody who was thinking about niches and understood interest, identity, and issues recognized, wow, you know what? A lot of people read that book, really love them. I've seen all these shirts, you know, school shirts or um, profession shirts. Uh, this guy was a lawyer. Uh, let me do kind of a, a parody of that, Law Offices of Atticus Finch. It, identity, only people who know that story would get it. Somebody who knows that story and likes it wants to be seen as that person. They would immediately get, think, wow, i got to have that because they know Everybody who's read that book will get it and think, wow, that's really clever, that's really cool, what a great guy, and it, it makes them part of a uh, special group. Only people who read that book would get it and know what that means. Right? In this screenshot, it's showing 291 sold. I know that the originator sold over 2,000 of these. 2,000. That's $20,000 in gross profit, at least ten or 15000 in net profit, and I've seen dozens of Me Too copycats, some of which have actually sold a bunch, okay? Um, whoops, backwards. So here's a case coming up with the niche, a best-selling book, and what can we do with the character? You know, so many people have read it, love it, the book, the movie, it resonates with them. This is the kind of outside the box thinking of beginning with a targetable group and then coming up. You know, for all I know, the guy was rereading To Kill a Mockingbird, is in the tea business and thought, wow, I wonder if I could do something with this. And then thought, you know what would be clever? I'll do a shirt like these uh, college shirts or these profession shirts about this guy, and you know what, I, he already knows, you know, it's almost intuitive. Anyone who's read it and loves that book or that movie will get it and want to buy it, and he was right on. There are an unlimited number of niches and ideas. Don't be stuck copying the few that are visible, that seem to be selling, that seem easy. If you train yourself to that idea mindset, stuff like this comes easy. It starts to come without even thinking about it. Okay, I wanted to go over one other case study. I mentioned uh, to a few people, uh, 
uh, and, and one of the comments that I saw in the what's your biggest obstacle is the cost of Facebook advertising. Is it possible to succeed in this business without spending money on Facebook advertising? It absolutely is. It's hard to scale past a certain point, but you could definitely easily make money without spending on Facebook advertising and at the very least build yourself a war chest to then be able to afford to do Facebook advertising. This is a case study of one that was done with zero advertising costs. A guy named Travis Patel, uh, brilliant marketer. Uh, this was, uh, I think, a year and a half or two years ago. Uh, really outside the box thinking and a good illustration. The niche is college football. You know, sports in general is a passionate niche. People, are pa people who are into it are passionate about it. College, probably more so than general sports, because these are people who identify uh, with a particular college. They feel a kinship, a belonging, a uniqueness, uh, um, a group, etc. And Facebook makes it really easy to target these kinds of niches. Touches on all three uh, of those eyes, identity, issues, and interests. The idea was brilliant. Hopefully this will spark, if you let it, you know, marinate in your head, uh, bounce around in your head for a while, you should come up with, uh, not necessarily identical, but it should open the door to some additional outside the box thinking and that idea mindset. Okay, here's the premise. Two longtime college rivals, um, I think it was Alabama and Auburn. They are two state colleges in the U.S that are on opposite divisions and play football against each other. They've had a rivalry going back decades. They are arch enemies on the football field and they just happen to both reach the semifinals and play against each other. And anyone who followed college football, particularly those who went to either of those schools, knew this was a, you know, this was a showdown. The last game that determined who went on to the national championships was won in the last seconds with an extraordinary play. It's the kind of dream outcome. If you're into sports, uh, it's the kind of dream outcome to any competition. You know, it's really close, it's arch rivals, and it comes down to the last seconds, and somebody's extraordinary playing or ability uh, turns things completely around, and that was the case with this game. The play-by-play -play on that final play was broadcast by the announcer who broadcast the game, and it became almost um, mythical. It began, Chris Davis takes it in the back of the end zone, he'll run it to the 10, the 15, the 20, 20, and he keeps going. There he goes, oh my gosh, Davis is gonna run all the way back, these guys are going to win. I can't believe this is happening. Yada, yada, and bang, he scores. They win. It's an upset. They go to the finals. It's just heaven for anybody into that sort of thing. So what this guy did is take a transcript of the announcement of that final play that tens, probably hundreds of thousands of fans listened to, knew or read about the next day or uh, you know, heard on their TiVo or from their friends or in the radio in the car or at the game. It was glorious. It's everything people get into sports for. And he just turned it into text and put it on a hoodie. Then he went and looked up the groups on Facebook and the pages that were relevant. War Eagles uh, is uh, uh, Auburn. Uh, I'm sorry, is Alabama, Tigers is Auburn. He looked for groups easy to find on Facebook. And instead of paying for ads, just did a post as a fan, hey, who's going to the championship that was just decided? We're pumped. By the way, I found this awesome t-shirt. It gives me chills every time I hear this call. And he doesn't even have a picture of the t-shirt because that probably would have gotten booted by the moderator. Instead, hey man, you remember this thing? Wasn't it great? Want to relive it? Somebody came up with a great idea. Here it is on a shirt. 
click through and you'll get to it and you could buy it. He sold hundreds and hundreds, didn't spend a nickel in ads. Brilliant idea, brilliant implementation. Let that marinate in your head and you'll start to come up with um, similar, lateral, different, kind of like alternate ideas. Okay, a couple of tips and tricks, uh, and I'm sorry we're running later than I expected, so I'll run through this real quick, then we'll wrap it up and uh, try to take questions for uh, anyone who's still around and would like. Uh, and I do see the questions um, that have been posted, so I'll try to get to some of those. Okay, some tips and tricks. Compare platforms. Here's an eye-opener, and by the way, I am platform agnostic. They all have benefits, advantages, and disadvantages. And by platforms, I mean the print-on-demand platforms that most of us are familiar with. Uh, most of us started with Teespring. There's a bunch of them now. There's Teespring, uh, Fabrily in Europe, uh, Sunfrog in Europe. Uh, there's Represent, there's Viral Style, there's T-Chips, uh, T-Chip. These are all similar print-on-demand. Teespring, the biggest, the first, uh, in many ways, the most advanced. But uh, a lot of these platforms now are ready for prime time, and there is competition, and it pays to compare. Let me give you an example. This was a shirt I did on one platform. You can see the image uploaded. It's a three-color image. The base cost on one platform for the lowest price shirt 1015. All right? Not bad, I guess. Same shirt, different platform, a dollar fifty less. All right? That's like a 20% uh, difference. And when you're uh, paying for advertising and doing the numbers, that can be huge. That could be the difference in thousands of dollars leaving on the table. Now, don't hear me say one platform is the most expensive and you should check. Sometimes it's the other way around. My point is compare the pricing and the features. Some platforms let you do things, some others don't. Uh, Teespring happens to have some of the best, most advanced uh, and worthwhile features for marketers in terms of um, uh, ad factory and easily accessible uh, analytics and uh, you know et cetera et cetera um, represent has features that beat them all viral style has uh, cost and some more advanced features that none of them have uh, the point is uh, do your homework and and don't assume that one platform is the best all of the time Okay, compare, compare platforms. And I should have taken that. It shouldn't say for cost. It should just say compare platforms. Consider other languages and countries. You know, this is one of those, yeah, it makes sense, but, uh, you know, for some of us, English is already a second language, and that seems to be a significant barrier to then consider even uh, other countries and languages. Even for those of us where English is, uh, or, or native language, and, you know, we're uh, uh, lazy uh, Americans or North Americans and don't want to consider anything else, um, it can open up worlds of opportunity. A lot of us have seen these types of shirts, you know, about grandma, grandpa, grandkids. Uh, this is one. It's um, even when my grandchildren are not in my arms, they're close to my heart, right? These are different variations of... A, a design that's been very popular. Tens of thousands of this type of design have been sold, but it's played out. You know, it's, it's a me too. You know, some of you may have tried it. You're not going to make money with it. Um, first, uh, it's been hammered to death, uh, you know, etc. I thought about it and remember, start with niche first. I was beginning to consider other countries, other languages. I know that in some cultures, uh, family and kids, in particular, particularly grandkids, are a much bigger deal than they are in some other cultures. In particular, many of the Hispanic and Latino uh, cultures, that's a big deal. For $5, I went to Fiverr, 
had this um, saying translated into a couple of different dialects of Spanish, had my designer do our own design, used Google Translate to get the sales page, you see it says 100% guaranteed, and then in Spanish it says this will sell out, and then in Spanish, I did that just with Google Translate, right? And I already knew this is a proven um, uh, niche idea, right? It's proven because it's sold tens of thousands. Problem is it's played out, it's a me too, uh, but guess what? It's wide open in Spanish. It's wide open in Brazil and Chile and Spain and Colombia and a dozen Latin American uh, locations, and it sells really, really well. Still does. Right? The idea is consider other languages, other countries. I don't speak other languages, and I'm as lost as anybody uh, in this. What I do know is that for five bucks, I can get onto Fiverr and have a viable, accurate translation done. I can use Google Translate for nothing to uh, do the sales page. And, by the way, Fabrily, which is one of the uh, uh, dominant platforms, POD platforms in Europe, and which Teespring now owns, will do auto-translation of the checkout page and currency, so you, can, you don't even have to do part of that to be able to advertise different languages in different countries. And guess what? When you go to Facebook and you go to advertise, the costs are almost always way cheaper. The most expensive traffic is prime U.S. English-speaking traffic. In every direction, when you move away from that, it starts to get cheaper and cheaper, which means I can test more, I can make more money, I can scale further uh, and longer uh, by targeting other languages and other countries. Test variations. You know, I've had designs that I thought, oh man, this is, this is going to be a winner. And it wasn't, right? Um, and I felt so sure about it. I would have a designer come up with a couple of different variations and lo and behold, my intuition was right uh, and it worked. This was uh, something, it's a, um, a spoof of an organization in the US called MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Drivers, uh, and it's turned into Mothers Against Daughters Dating, or uh, Dads Against Drunk Drivers turned into Daughters Against, Dads Against daughter's dating. But the one I tried didn't sell and I was so sure that it was a worthwhile concept that I had my designer come up with a few variations, created a few ads with each of the designs. And by the way, if you create multiple ads and put them within the same ad set, Facebook will automatically rotate between them until one of them starts to outperform the others, and then Facebook will automatically favor it and start sending traffic there. So before that, I would have walked away from this idea thinking, well, it was one of those that sounded good to me, but the market showed me otherwise. Tried some variations, found one, that stuck, had traction, and did really well. Test other, test other products. Don't limit yourself just to t-shirts. All of the POD platforms now at least also have uh, phone cases, uh, totes, et cetera. There are platforms that will do other things. So here's a, a, an easy money maker for you. All of those me too's that I told you not to do that are played out for a whole lot of reasons. Well, guess what? You can take those and translate them to another product and now all of a sudden they're new and they haven't been played out and haven't been played to death. Here's two that I took. We've all seen the this girl loves her whatever. This guy loves his whatever. Played to death and the whole dog breed thing played to death. 
But guess what? It wasn't played to death as a phone cover. And the reason it was played to death as a shirt is because it worked for a while, right? People who, you know, girls into Yorkies like that. This girl loves her Yorkie as a shirt, right? Could I do a Me Too with the shirt? Probably not. Probably not and succeed. But guess what? If I'm the first one to make that available as a phone case, if it worked as a shirt, very often it'll work as a phone case. And all of a sudden, you have no competition. Uh, same thing with the design we did, um, uh, taking advantage of the um, Susan B. Komen pink ribbon deal, right? Actually tried this as a shirt and it didn't work. Um, it's, a, it's an original design, we did this, but either that niche was saturated, pounded to death at the time, or I wasn't targeting it well, but as soon as I put it on a phone case, it took off. test variations, test other products, comb through other sites that sell similar things. eBay, Pinterest, Zazzle, Cafe Press, Wanalo. Uh, there's tons of sites where people are buying things that have all the same characteristics and marketing aspects. They're just not available. They're just not being promoted on Facebook as shirts. That's where you'll come up with some of your best ideas. You know, shirts that sell on other platforms but aren't being promoted on Facebook. It's telling you it already knows it sells. It's just not being promoted on Facebook. It's an almost certain winner. That said, don't copy them. Take it, do something a little different, do something a little better, make it yours. But do your research. All right, we're running much later than I expected, so let me... Pause this for a minute, get out of there. Um, I really appreciate all of you for sticking around. I'm gonna open it for questions. By the way, um, I did mention there's nothing for sale here. I, sh I should have mentioned that up front. You can't buy anything. I am gonna be doing a very inexpensive paid live training membership. It's gonna be about 15 bucks a month for weekly live training. It's not available yet. You can't buy it yet. I'll probably email you a link at some point. Um, but that's it. And now I'll try to take a few questions, uh, and then we'll wrap it up. Again, I really appreciate everybody's time. Uh, let's see. Under the questions. Wow, there's a lot of them. Here's one I've seen a few times from Roger, from Ashley, a couple of variations. Um, do I think the tea business is saturated? Is it going to be saturated, uh, et cetera? And I'll tell you this from the heart. As someone who's been in and around this stuff uh, since there's been an internet um, and is not one to, you know, spout uh, roses uh, or, or sees through rose-colored glasses, um, some business models and markets do get saturated. And as marketers, we tend to ruin things for ourselves uh, as quickly as possible. This, however, is not one of those. And I mentioned some of those reasons uh, up top. People are always gonna buy shirts. They don't just buy one and they're done. Uh, if it were saturated tomorrow, six months from now, a lot of those people, their size has changed, the weather, the seasons have changed, uh, the thing, other things are interesting to them, uh, the shirt is, is worn out and doesn't fit, or et cetera. In other words, people are going to continually buy shirts. And even though it looks to us like a lot of people are getting into this business, and there are, there's a lot of people out there. Facebook touches over a billion people. You can, for pennies, get in front of a billion people on this planet who at some point or another will buy a shirt. A billion is a big number. I mean, it's, it's almost unimaginable. So, and it's growing. They still, you know, Facebook is a smart company. They're uh, going to great lengths to turn that into two billion and then four billion. Eventually, almost everybody will be on. So it's growing. Um, a lot of people who get into this business flame out and move on. For a lot of the reasons that we went over, um, most people, fail. They will continue to fail. They'll only fail for so long before they give up. And that's the same in, in all these business models. Um, it's a pity here because there is room for everybody 
and it's possible for everybody to succeed, but the reality is most people will fail, they'll eventually get tired or broke or frustrated or a combination of those and move on. So there's a continuous churn. The number of people who succeed and will stay because they're succeeding is a small fraction of that. Do I think it's saturated or will get saturated? I think it's the first business model that is, is virtually unsaturatable. Uh, all right, let's see. Uh, what do I think? Well, there's a lot of questions. Um, I'm not going to be able to get to them all. I'll try to pick a couple that are uh, mentioned uh, a few times. Um, somebody asked, uh, am I paying for designs? And that's, that's a good question. Yes. I have a designer, he's a, um, uh, a Filipino uh, that I outsource to, he's a full-time employee or a VA, he's an artist. Um, I pay him peanuts, although I pay much higher than uh, the going rate because um, I want a good relationship with the guy who's working for me, I want the best of the best, even still. I pay this guy only a few hundred bucks a month, and he works for me full-time, 40 hours a week. A professionally trained, professional graphic artist who comes up with amazing design. You know, a lot of us have tried to wing it, have tried to do it ourselves, design-wise. And I got to tell you, despite, you know, I was on a webinar a little while ago with a guy who had a product um, that he was... Um, uh, uh, flogging, it was a design your own shirt for non-artist thing, and it had a bunch of templates, and, you know, it took a couple of uh, Photoshop-like scripts and built it in so you could easily do text on a curb, etc., and the idea was to give non-artists artist capability. What it ends up doing is giving non-artists the tools to continue making more awful designs. Uh, look, I, I've been involved in graphics most of my adult life. Uh, and I gotta say, I, I can't draw a straight line, but I've been in and around it for a long time. I can do competent designs, because I've had to for a long time, but there is no comparison to someone who's actually got those skills and talents. You can get things designed very inexpensively, whether it's paying one off on Fiverr or on a um, uh, freelance site like uh, Odesk or any of the others, um, or you can hire someone even part-time for chump change. Uh, it is imperative. I, I should have put this in the bullet points. I can't stress this enough. Um, you can do really well with text-only designs. Easily, half of the shirts that um, sell for me are text only. That, but even those, picking the right font, doing it well, colors, etc. It just, you know, the difference between a design done by someone with talent and skills and someone who's not is the difference in something that will sell versus something that won't. If you're going to be serious about this business. You either need those skills and talents, or you need to go with someone that has them. That's just non-negotiable if you want to stay in this business and succeed. Fortunately, if you follow my advice, you don't need to launch 30 campaigns a day. That's, that's silly. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a path to uh, ruination. If you do this right, if you do your research first, look at your niche and your target first, and then consider ideas, you won't have to launch 30 a day. You may have one or two good ones a day or even a week, and that's enough because they'll have a much, much higher uh, chance of success. Many of them will succeed, and you don't need to uh, have such a low percentage of winners that you need hundreds of them to make any money. Right? Um, in that case, you don't need to spend a fortune on design. You could do one-offs uh, and eventually um, uh, hire somebody or partner with someone. You know, there's play. I've seen posted plenty of times on Facebook, hey, I'm a designer, but I don't know uh, advertising. Right? I don't have the money to advertise. Partner with somebody uh, like that. The point is, 
um, designs need to be done by people who can produce good designs. All right, a lot of a lot of questions about ads, um, and it's not within the time allowance for this webinar to go into that. I specifically avoid that, but uh, I'll try to uh, give you a general answer that actually works. Again, I've seen a lot of conflicting and contradictory advice out there. Uh, the main types of ads are website conversion, um, uh, click to website, or page post engagement. Uh, and there are pros and cons for each, and a lot of people have a lot of different philosophies. I'll tell you what I actually do. I start almost every campaign with a straight clicks to website for 10 or 15 or $20. If I've done my homework and I've done my targeting right, I'll know in that 10 or $20, either it'll be profitable or it won't. It'll be very clear, right? Um, if I've done my homework. The idea is I want to learn very quickly, very early on, did I target this right? Did I pick the right niche? Did I do my research? Because if I did, and the design is good, some people will buy. And that's the quickest way to find out. Um, I generally don't do a page, a Facebook page, until I know a design will, play out, will work out. But once it does, I'll create a page and then I'll continue to focus in that niche because I've done the research for it and I'll look for other opportunities so it pays to do. Uh, I know that wasn't the answer a lot of you were looking for. Um, one thing to keep in mind, um, there are no pat answers or silver bullets and if you try to look for them, somebody will give them to you and you will um, be very unhappy. Uh, okay, a lot of people asking about coaching, etc. I did mention I'm going to be offering a uh, live training membership. It's going to be a weekly session like this, live and recorded, so you'll be able to get to it. The idea is to learn how to do this, how to succeed, uh, look at case studies, deconstruct winners and losers, learn the tricks of the trade, go into depth and detail on things like ads and targeting and other avenues, other alternatives. It's not available yet. It will be soon. It'll be very inexpensive, like 15 or 20 bucks a month for weekly live uh, training. I will let you know by email uh, when that's ready. Huh. Okay, um, it's 2.30, uh, which was my hard stop time. I want to thank all of you again for taking time out of your day to listen to what I had to say. Um, I do try to answer questions and be available on Facebook. I respond to posts. Just please keep in mind, um, I get a lot of questions and don't always have the opportunity or the time. So if you message me or respond to one of my posts and I don't get back to you, I'm not being rude. Um, and please don't take it personally. Um, thank you all very, very much. Again, this has been recorded and I will make sure you all get a link either tonight or tomorrow. And on that note, we're going to end, and I hope all of you have a wonderful rest of your day, rest of your week. Take some of this, take it to heart, and start succeeding, because if ever there was uh, a business that anyone really can make a lot of money in, this is it. Have a great day, everybody.